Hello, welcome to a special summer mini campaign edition of the Flying Bison podcast. I am joined by four great players. Uh, we're not on video, so I have to introduce them uh, vocally. We got Johnny and Nick, hey. who are here hey. all the time. Oh, yeah, we're old news. Well, nice. huh? but we got two new players and two players that you are going to be hearing and seeing a lot from coming soon. Gus and Will, how's it going? Doing good. How are uh, you? It's going well. Good. I'm, t- I'm, I'm just cruising. Uh-huh. It's Friday night. Um, the feeling's right. <laughs> Let's just keep going with the lyrics. I feel like I, we can't get copyright struck if we don't sing. I don't. Well, <laughs> I don't even know what the next lyric was. I think he's out of lyrics. I knew that was it. That was it. That was all I got. Like that was everything that he had. Uh, I I can feel the next lyric. No idea. (laughs) No. (laughs) Don't believe me. Just call it out. I don't even know the next lyrics. (laughs) So, well, I'll look it up. I'll look it up later. Um, (laughs) I we have been trying to do this for a very long time. I was like doing like a little four episode something or another in the summer just to give us a break. Uh, and so we've been trying to plan this. And I was trying to plan it for the most amount of players. I, in my head, I was like, let's get all of the old cast, the original cast and all the new cast and play at the same time. And I was like, I mean, I could do it. It's like, what is that? Eight, eight players, seven players, mm-hmm. seven, eight players, seven. something like that. I was like, I could do it. It'd be, it'd be difficult, but we could do it. Um, have any of you ever tried to coordinate seven adult schedules, all who yeah. have their own full lives and interests? Yeah, it's awful. It's, it's it really awful. It's awful. awful. Justin, <laughs> you have to count yourself. So nine I'm barely a person. Schedules. I'm a GF. <laughs> Subcategory. <laughs> no, I feel, I I'll not like, be taking uh, any more questions about that. Uh, <laughs> And we we had multiple times. And I'm like, this is the start, guys. We're gonna do it. And then like two people would be like, something came up. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm going back to the drawing board. And it happened with this too. We like we had the most amount of the seven of us, which was five. And literally today, someone was like, hey, I gotta drop out. And I was like, I get it. I understand why. We still have four players. Let's just make it work. I think the four of us can have way more fun without those three dead weights than we could with them. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> jokes on them. Yeah, they're probably not going to listen to this. We, so we can just publicly so we say. Yeah. We can say whatever we want about them. They'll never listen. Oh. Yeah. Danny sucks. No. Yeah, he does. <gasps> wow, Nick. Uh, you really you really jumped head first into that one, huh? Yeah, you're, you're, you no product at all. It's really you're terrible thing to say, to say about our dear, dear friend, Danny. <laughs> okay, I know I kind of feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, you shouldn't feel bad having it in the chamber. Having oh, pre-prepared okay. statements, that's all PR is, baby. So That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Uh, mm. We are playing a game over four episodes that is called uh, External Containment Bureau. It is fun. I feel like every summer now we do this sort of like science fiction Cthulhu mythos type game. So I figured let's just keep up the trend. Let's play external containment Bureau. It's kind of like X files or fringe. If you've seen it, Um, the players are going to be presented with a paranormal phenomena. They're going to have to investigate the paranormal phenomena, figure out what it is. And then they're going to have to figure out how to contain the phenomena as well as uh, keep it from the eyes of those who are not a part of the Bureau or who already know about the paranormal. It's going to be really cool. I'm really excited. Uh, we are going to just jump into character creation because I think we can do it very, very fast. Johnny does not believe me, but I'm I just know what out to prove him is. wrong. I'm out to prove you wrong tonight, Johnny. That's all I want to do tonight. Okay. Many have tried. You have succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> all right step one we're using a uh, online character keeper but feel free to use a sheet if you want to uh we are going to start with your name and your id and your id is 
what the bureau calls you. It could be like a, a field code name. It could be just a number of serial numbers. Something to call you in the field. Or if you just want to go by your name in the field, that works too. Should we share these as we... Yeah, yeah, the think cab? about them and yeah, yeah, let's do it. Codename Clarissa. It is the name of every white girl you hated. You can't pick a Clarissa out of a crowd, so I feel like it works perfectly. That's good. That's real That's good. good. That's real good. Co co Codename Big Mama. <laughs> okay. We're, we're sure we're sticking on that? Oh, yeah. Wait, do you okay. want our full right. name, too? Like our real name and our code name? Or yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just I'd like you. I'd like your real name too, because here's the thing. Here's the thing about external container <clears throat> beer. It's it's part fringe. It's also part uh like office bureaucracy. So there's like a like a paperwork like work side to this game as well too, which is kind of fun and and goofy. So yeah, give me your real name as well too. Okay, so I'll I'll give you the opposite order from everybody else so far. So my character's real name is Drake Silverhand. And he was Wonderful. told to come up with a field name, and he it was a little on the spot for him. So his field name is Blake Goldfoot. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. We are the country's best and brightest. Excellent. Oh, is, I should I should re I should emphasize this. <laughs> There's a focus on science in this game. So you're all very accomplished, like people that the Exterminant Containment <laughs> Bureau would want in their organization to help contain these paranormal threats. But by all means, continue. <laughs> Drake is extremely competent. He's just not good at coming up with a code name on the spot. <laughs> that's, and like, that's the because, flaw. <laughs> because it's so weighed down in red tape. He's like, can I change this? And they're like, no, sorry. Yeah, you came exactly. up with it. For, that's it. You <laughs> gotta fill out this, this, and then you're gonna have to take that to the third floor and give that to... <laughs> <laughs> give it to hr and hr will approve it or deny it <laughs> he's genuinely brownies. terrified of the head of hr so he just won't go up there if he can help oh it. yeah who is it <laughs> who isn't terrified of hr everyone's afraid of the head of hr but no one really quite knows who the head of hr is it's true Damn. it's the power Damn. of hr <laughs> you never know <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to go with real name Jonathan Hammer. Code name Nail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sensing a like real name code name thing between everybody here. So my real name, again, code name, Big Mama. Real yes, name, of course. Legal name, uh, Kyle Larson. <laughs> He's just a guy. <laughs> he's, just a, he's just a dude. <laughs> Was that? I thought of the most basic dude name I could think of. I was like I was trying like, to think. That's Was that name. Martin Lawrence's character's name in Big Mama? <laughs> For a split second, I was like, Mama. He... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Everyone in external containment. Is that, is that Martin Lawrence? Does he work at the... <laughs> No, it can't be. No, there's no way. <laughs> he made his code name Big Mama because he wants people to ask about <laughs> what he thinks is the pinnacle of his film <laughs> career. <laughs> uh, what is what is Cl Clarissa's real name? I feel like that is her real name. It okay. is, it's just Clarissa. Clarissa it's just Chaputo, Clarissa. if you will. Clarissa Chaputo, full name. Clarissa tells Bearing it all. striking resemblance to Long Island Medium, uh, Teresa Caputo. Teresa Caputo, I love that. <laughs> Can so you good. tell what theme we're going for here? Yeah, yes. it's yes. good. I, I told you all at the start of this that this was like Fringe and X-Files and not like Men in Black. And then immediately <laughs> we just switch... You I feel and just now, having fun with the idea? names. Just now we're in Men in Black. <laughs> hey, this is going to well, be real serious. Do you want the serious. other character idea? You could be honest. I mean, let's let's hear it, Will. Okay, so the other character, they are a DJ from Australia, raised in Atlanta, Georgia. They're really bad at their job. 
Um, and their code name is DJ, but the real name is Bowie Jane. Oh no! They're really bad at their job because an alien put a thing in their head, and now the music sounds different. <laughs> Come on! I, this is rules legal. A he musician is technically a category you can be in this yeah. rule book. I, yeah, need to, I just need, I need to clarify one thing because from Australia, but raised in Atlanta, so. Are they one of those like insufferable people who was born in another country, spent zero time outside of their like first <laughs> weeks of life there, but tells everyone that's where they're from? No, they were born in Atlanta. <laughs> their parents just Australian. <laughs> Even Perfect. Better. No notes. No Do they notes. have the accent? Yes. <laughs> Low key, the rock. Oh, that's incredible. That's wonderful. Well, now that we've got all these names and you're going to make me call them by not only their real names, but their code names as well, too. You will uh, refer we, to me only as Big Mom. That is, that will... is his. Nobody knows his legal name. I mean, technically the Bureau does, but nobody, he doesn't tell anyone that his name yeah. is Kyle. Just uh, to be clear. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, too, uh, pronouns for these characters mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he, him. Big Mama. Larissa is a she, her. He, him. Yeah, Tr Drake Jason. is also he, him. Yeah. Cool. cool, 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 cool. All right. I need your background. We're going to answer this in two separate avenues. The first avenue is going to be, you're basically going to be thinking about what this character did before they got recruited by the External Containment Bureau. And so thinking about that, you're going to tell me their field. There's some I, like options that they give you, um, but you can kind of come up with whatever you want. I need a field, and then I need your specialty within that field. So, for instance, uh, um, like a criminal academic might be somebody who teaches like uh, criminal law at a at a college or something or like a forensic scientist like professor right um so you can combine like a field a general field and then a specialty and that'll kind of tell us what their job was before they got into external containment bureau and then kind of like where they function now yeah uh drake was uh investigation academic uh he was a librarian I love that. I love that. Clarissa worked interpersonal relationships in the occult. She's a medium, talks to the dead. Not well, but she does it. <laughs> okay. Love it. Love it. Interpersonal. I, I had no idea you were going to go with that, Will, based on what you've said previously. <laughs> I can switch it up really quick. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not really. I'm not changing my mind. No, no, it's great. I love it. It's so fun. What about the rest of you? What you thinking? I'm thinking investigation, human relations. Okay, okay. What a like a what do we think? Like a detective, private eye. Um, the, the person that does all the HR investigations in the company just happened to stumble across <sighs> something paranormal and it's like, I guess I'm not going to handle this. Uh, wait, what are those called again? They're, um, like the insurance <sighs> fraud finders. Yeah. Like it, it, there's like a word for that. Like the people that come out and like assess the like insurance situation and claims adjuster? adjuster, claims adjuster, adjuster, adjuster. claims you. adjuster. That's it. That's the one we got it. Uh, internet claims adjusting. Uh, I'm going to drop for a <laughs> quick second because I need to switch my internet over. Adjuster. This is the most hilarious ragtag group of <laughs> but people. Justin, you're happen. underestimating. Whenever you have like the funny opening with all the characters being goofy, you have it's the true. most serious campaigns. It's true. You're right. You're right. <laughs> true um speaking of which uh i i am a hacker it's a criminal technical okay. position criminal technical <clears throat> okay okay all right 
<laughs> oh, sorry. I guess under for investigation, mine would technically fall under technical. Right, because archaeologist, hacker, forensic scientist. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah. We might be already a little bit past this, so so we don't need to move backwards if you don't want to. But do you want us to give you like a little piece of like why that particular skill set made the bureau bring us in? Or I mean, yeah, give me like a sentence or two. Yeah, I am interested, especially for some of them. Like hacker, hacker makes sense to me. Librarian makes sense to me. I I guess they all make sense. But give me yes, give me something that 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 makes sense. Okay. Um, I was not prepared. I was just asking. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fine then if you don't have anything that's fine too like i could see how all these people might be somebody that you know they would the bureau would get them yeah totally oh, so wait. i have something prepared <laughs> i had <laughs> i had so, no doubt i'm so excited for this in case anybody is uh not a tlc fanatic long island medium was canceled in 2019 after eight long seasons of Teresa caputo digging up trauma of these poor people all across the country on tlc's <laughs> dime mm -hmm. so nice. my thought is clarissa the alternate version of Teresa, her show only got one season the bureau was like hold up you are bringing too much attention to what we do and our paths are crossing too much so they kidnapped her, straight up took her out, canceled the show, tanked the stock of DL TLC, frankly. And now the company is out of business. That's that's wonderful. That is Wait, wonderful. So this is a version of the world where we don't have 90 iterations of 90 Day Fiance yep. now? It's the correct yeah. timeline. This is a world better. I do not want to live in. I don't know who Big Ed is. I don't know who I am. <laughs> But sorry, that means sorry. we won't have to deal with John and Kate plus eight. That means they lived a happy life without you. It's true. It's true. I just, they predated I saw... uh, Long Island Medium, though. Things are still terrible for them. Yeah, for them. That's a bummer. For them specifically. That's a bummer. That's a huge bummer. That's, that's, that's great. I'm glad in this universe TLC doesn't, uh, doesn't exist. I'll have to. I'm going to write a note of that. Or at the very least, they were legally required to change their name from the Learning Channel. <laughs> hey, TLC has reached out to a lot of people I know personally are being on shows. They do great work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Wonderful. Uh, all right. Next, I need you to choose a bureau department. There are one, two, three, four, five, six bureau departments. There's administration, field operations, human relations, records, research and development, and sanitation. And there is a special one as well for the adventure we're playing called the Department of Temporal Stability. So there's two uh, ways this can go. Yeah. <laughs> and in the interest of diversifying where we're all from within the uh, company, we could either do human relations for Clarissa or we could do administration. Because I think she uses her ghost powers to try and make decisions. So, like, talking to the dead about who we should fire, settling disputes between coworkers, you have a spy constantly. Or making, <laughs> making the company better, right? Talking to the dead to do that. Either way. Holy a seance to, to ask if this person should get a raise. <laughs> really oh my god. <laughs> Can you imagine you walk in on your boss just like <laughs> That's Nicole. There's a pentagram on the floor, does, a candle all littered around. Does Carl from accounting need a twelve percent raise? Ooh, fifteen? Uh, <laughs> I I think um Gus has already said that Jonathan is gonna be from human relations. So what do you think? You want to both be from human relations? You want to you want to go administration there, Clarissa? We could do admin. Let's do administration. Clarissa. Now, uh, choosing your department within the bureau is going to give you a few things. It's going to give you a special ability for administration. <laughs> you can justify almost anything as being by the book under bureau policy depending on how brazen of a claim you make the gm will assign you one to three paperwork and we'll 
get into paperwork when I get to it. Um, so it gives you an ability. It's also going to give you a uh, the the gear that someone in your department typically gets. So you're going to note your special ability and then note the gear that you have as well too. Uh, what about the rest of you, Jonathan? Let's get you out of the way. You said human relations. Oh, me. Hi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, do we have a Jonathan on the call? No, we <laughs> don't. It's you. Yeah. It's me. I'm Jonathan. Uh, yeah. Human relations. So I get to wear business casual attire. Yeah. I will be comfy. Great. It's great. I'm here for it. Radio cover identity, small comforts. That's, there's some good stuff in there. There's some good yeah. stuff in there. Uh, Kyle, Drake, what, uh, what are we thinking? It's a big mama to you. Sorry, first of all, big mama, <laughs> big mama. I apologize. Uh, research and development. Okay. I I knew it. I read the research and development ability, and I said, "I know Nick is going to pick this. Oh, I is. know he's going to pick it. I just I know it." I get to make up a doohickey. Obviously, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Any moment, you can just be like, I've got this thing that does this. <sighs> uh, Blake, I, I have a feeling I know which way you're going to go, but I want you to say it. Records. I had a feeling. Say it again. Records. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Note your uh, your special ability and your uh, starting gear. We're going to do something a little different than a normal game of External Containment Bureau. Normally, you do not start with a paranormal power, but it says an optional rule. If it fits the tone of your game, all agents may start the game with one paranormal power. So I'm going to go ahead and let you all each choose a paranormal power that your character starts with. I'm going to go with Transcendence. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about that <laughs> because I'm going to read it. I'm really happy you picked that. Uh, do you actually want to pick that? Yes. OK, great. Uh, when you <clears throat> select this power, you immediately redact all of time and space to conform to your own will for a few moments. Afterward, you transcend mundane existence. For other, or otherwise vanish as if you had selected your fourth power level. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say that Big Mama is actually not a, a PC anymore. Wait, what? You are no longer a PC. You have transcended mundane existence and have become something outside of time and space. Please create a new character. <laughs> oh, I thought it's when I used it, I would get to... <laughs> when you select this power... You immediately redact all of time and space. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, okay. My. And then I, I redact my selection of this this power. <laughs> I really want to make you. I really want to make you keep it. I really want to make you keep it because I think it'd be all right. Pick something else. That doesn't really make sense. So, like the powers, it's when you select it. It says you may choose this power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then it says when I, you select this power. It doesn't say when. In in the power, it does. It does. It like all the yeah, other ones are just power, like make an action all. roll, mark a mark a residence, and that one's like when you take this power, you just stop existing in time and space. Oh, this will, oh wow, that's so. Funny. I was in my defense. I was reading the text in the quick start, and it yeah. says a different. It says you may choose this power to immediately. Ah, uh, I guess that's still trying to say the same thing, but the language isn't as hard. <clears throat> Uh, I think it's still funny, and I'm already going to take this moment and you originally choosing that, and it will be part of the story. Cool. I think Clarissa is choosing telekinesis. Okay. Interesting. Just to make the seances go a little easier, a little faster, she doesn't get up out of her chair to bring the stuff mm. near her. I gotcha. It's merely convenience. Gotcha. Jonathan's going to go with retrocognition. Okay. I For some reason, I thought the medium was going to take that, but 
I was thinking telepathy simple. for the medium. <laughs> for an adjuster, it's perfect. That's why the bureau brought him in. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Blake and Big Mama, what what are you taking? All right, looks like I'm taking teleportation. Love it. Cool. Rolled for it because I couldn't okay. decide. I triple read this one. So I really hope I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Telepathy. Oh, that one, when you select this power, your mind breaks. And I'm just kidding. You saw me have a different character, dude? I'll just. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> no, all I right. feel like I have one of the least problematic characters here. <laughs> we've got. All right. We've got. We've got everything. Um, we would normally uh, record your basic gear. I'm not really interested in making you do that right now. If you tell me that your character has something that we could consider basic gear, fine. That's totally fine. Um, Is that not just the standard issue gear that's listed in your No, department? so the standard issue gear comes with your department, and then it says uh, you can also record your basic gear. Basic gear is just like necessity things that the like the Bureau would provide to all agents, like first aid mm, okay. kits, zip ties, um, you know. Uh, some things like uh, sidearms and like Geiger counters don't count. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, things like snacks, a uh, deck of playing cards to pass the time, like literally like basic things. Okay. Would perchance, I don't know, divination tools like an Oracle deck count as? Yeah, yeah, gear? totally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get that to you. That seems like something Clarissa would carry around. Wherever she goes. In her purse next to the pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> that she never reaches for because she just like floats it out of her purse. Right, exactly. I imagine that the pepper spray is right next to a can of very similarly designed hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the hairspray and... is used frequently. <laughs> <laughs> sure it is. Uh, and normally in a normal game, you would record uh, three contacts. So you would create one that is like a positive relationship, one that's sort of a, a rival, and then uh, your department head. Uh, because we're only going to be doing four episodes of this, we're going to skip that. If we were doing a longer campaign play, I think that would make a lot of sense because we could bring in all those interesting relationships. Um, but for this, we're kind of just going to play as is. Hey, Johnny. Yes. Peep the time. 4.58. What? Ooh. Two minutes to spare. Boom. Look at 28 you. 28 minutes. Look at that. <laughs> I told you. We finally did it, folks. It was actually reverse psychology. Johnny was just trying to get you. <laughs> you did a good job. You did a good job. You did a good job. I like, it's me. I am Johnny. I am uh, Johnny for real. I am Jonathan. But... <laughs> and with that, we're going to jump into to this adventure. Uh, this adventure is called uh, Figure Infinity. Infinity. Figure Infinity. It's like figure eight. But... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this adventure <laughs> is called Figure Infinity. It's a sideways eight, so it looks like figure eight, but it's but it's sideways. Uh, it there are a bunch of these mysteries that come in the core rule book, uh, and actually, uh, external containment bureau is created by. I have the top up here. Uh, its main developers were Eric Brunsell and Michael Elliott. You can get this on itch.io. Uh, but and there are a bunch of adventures that come in that. I'm doing a separate one that I have uh, was written by a man named Justin Ford, not me, uh, a different Justin, last name Ford. And that adventure is called Figure Infinity. And I do want, uh, let's see, I want one department head. Uh, I would like uh, Nail, Jonathan Nail. Um, who is the head of human relations? Say Savannah White. 
But I got Savannah White. You can give them the code name they need. <laughs> Georgia. Does she go by Vanna? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I was thinking. I know her. Thing. Isn't her code name Wheel? Yeah, I think that's. Yep. Yeah. She's wheel, partnered wheel with uh, Patrick <laughs> Sajak. Yeah. Code name Fortune. <laughs> code name Fortune. <laughs> And Patrick's uh, daughter's code name is Of. They make the ultimate trio. Yes. <laughs> they always shout their name every time they go anywhere. <laughs> Will! Oh, fuck! Yeah, they've stopped sending them America's anything game. clandestine. Ghostbusters music. <laughs> That's great. That's uh, why she's the HR campaign. Yeah. Uh, um, all right. Uh, it is, it's a, a rainy Tuesday. Um, External oh. Containment Bureau has... Uh, offices all over the country there are many places where ecb needs to be in order to respond to these threats at various locations i don't know where all you all are headquartered but uh a call has gone out to each of you and has asked basically told you you've got a mission and to come to the ecb headquarters in uh, seattle washington so you, you get there, it's rainy because it's Seattle. And the ECB headquarters are actually uh, the basement floor of like a comic book shop. So like you walk in and it just looks like a comic book shop. Uh, you give a secret code and you walk down to the bottom. And down there, uh, Savannah White is sitting uh, and she's sitting at the the end of the table and kind of gestures for the four of you to uh sit down um let's do this actually like who who's the first one to get there uh, as you're like walking down the stairs tell us uh what they look like i th i think big mama um, okay. Kyle Larson is yep. the first one there, but is not the first one to descend the stair, like give the code word. He like okay. lounges in the comic book store for a while. Um, very scrawny looking dude. Uh, just kind of hanging out and he will wait for somebody to like kind of go in the back room and then go in. Um, just like short blonde hair glasses that seem incredibly thick painfully thick um <clears throat> yeah just looking real close at some comics what uh what you're reading uh the new uh shang chi stuff is pretty good so okay. that's what he's right. that's what he's looking at okay i love it i love it uh who is who is the first person to go downstairs then why don't we... I feel like what that's about... Clarissa. Yeah, I was going to say, Clarissa. Because she's never been to a city like Seattle before. She's only been to good cities like New York. So this is really new for her. Um, So she gets there super early. Not early, right? Promptly on time, which to her is three minutes early. Um, Because, you know, a lot can happen in three minutes. You could die. You could have to talk to you. So you have to get there at that time. Um... So to paint a picture of who Clarissa is for everybody, she is 2010s plus size, but modern day average, um, which I think is a very specific body type. Listeners at home, you might know what I'm talking about here. She has very large, quafted, hairsprayed hair. Like she has not left the 80s. Um, she was a child then. So it's a miracle that she learned how to do that then. But she goes up to the back room and at the... Uh, place where she says the, the code word very loudly she says Sawayama hey hey heard you the first time go get downstairs okay sorry I get confused around doing these things we just go to the door usually huh. <laughs> you look around closer there's no one else in here except for for big mama <laughs> he does not acknowledge <laughs> Anything that is happening, he's just no, maybe she, goes deeper she, into the comic book. She's in her own world, just one of excellence. So she descends the stairs easily. 
<laughs> yeah, I think after like five more minutes, Kyle's like, okay, and then he goes, goes down. Who is the next person to descend the stairs to the basement of this comic book shop? I feel like Jonathan will walk in just kind of meekish, you know, in his, in his business casual. He does his best to just disappear when he's working on one of these things. Uh, just walks up to the counter, asks about, have you heard any new passphrases? And just kind of waits. <laughs> That's not, wait, aren't you, you're supposed to give me the passcode. Oh, I don't, I don't remember it. Hold on, hold up. And then can he use his retrocognition to hear what <laughs> Clarissa said? <laughs> All right, we're already getting into this. Okay. All right. I love it. Um, so yeah, you are going to, what is it? Mark a... <laughs> Mark a resonance to see echoes of a past event. Uh, yeah, if you want to mark a resonance, yeah. uh, go for it. Totally. So Marked. you you stop for a moment and you think back and you see this boisterous woman with incredibly quaffed hair shouting the passcode at the top of her lungs. And now you know the passcode. Oh, uh, it's Samoyam. Mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, do you have any Batman comic books here? Uh, yes, we do have a few. We've got the new uh, Nightwing comics. And, oh, uh, well, we no, always carry important. Batman Year One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, section uh, marked mm -hmm. Batman. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Walks downstairs. <laughs> Blake, you were the last one. What does Blake look like? Or Drake? Yeah, so the 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 clerk at the, the counter would see a guy who, like, it's possible that Big Mama noticed this person walk past the comic shop, like, six times during the, <laughs> the time sitting there. But, uh, but uh, Drake is wearing, like, a, a ill-fitting, like, it's a little bit too big, like, brown, ugly brown suit uh, that almost perfectly matches his skin tone and uh a shirt that's like clearly not been ironed it's like all disheveled his hair is absolutely a mess uh his glasses are like smudged and he uh comes in he's carrying like a messenger bag that's like overstuffed with <laughs> papers and you can see like what looks like full books are just stuffed into this bag and everything he walks up to the counter and he's just rummaging through a bunch of stuff and um it's uh hang on hang on how are you how, how are you today uh i'm 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 good i'm good it's, it's a, just a do, do you need help good yep all right you as well <laughs> great thanks um that door yeah it's the only other door besides the entrance sometimes they're hidden <laughs> It's a comic book shop, not like a like an illusory palace. Okay, you know, I've seen I've seen guys like just make doors appear. You don't you never know. Good luck. <laughs> he stops it. <laughs> Thanks. A guy just door. picks up a comic book and starts reading. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you get down, the four of you are there, and Savannah White is sitting there. Uh, she's wearing uh, like a like a lady's business suit, um, and she's got a folder in front of her. Four, actually. All right. Uh, four of you have a mission. Passes out the folders to each of you. At uh, six o'clock this morning, we detected a localized time loop that got started in Kingston, Washington, just across the lake here. We're going to need you to take the ferry there, identify the loop source, contain any damage, and hide the side effects from the people of Kingston. 
when we first detected it, it was in a very small part of Kingston, and over time, it is now covering most of the town of Kingston. So, from what we can tell, it seems to be expanding. So, I don't have to, don't feel like I need to reiterate how important it is to stop this. Have we sent in any other agents? We have sent in two other agents. They should be investigating there. I don't, we haven't heard from them, though. Uh, Agent Wise is there, and she took her uh, partner, Shale, who helps record things here at the Seattle, Seattle office. So the two of them are there. Is our fairy fair comped for the day? Uh, of, co- of course. Okay, just making sure. Well, she says of course, but like they usually let make me buy my own well, equipment. Did you did you fill out the the appropriate uh, expense reports for that? That's what there gets were 15 you. Fifteen of them. I don't know what to tell you. We need those expense reports, otherwise, we can't. Reverse it for that. It's fine. Can we, uh, we should, we should go, right? This is pretty bad. It's, it's pretty bad, yeah. Time, oh. that's it's physically, physically time impossible. Not, but... Nothing's gonna happen before we get there. And it'll happen again whenever we do, do arrive. Right, but it's, um, it's growing, right? Is the problem? Yes. Um, how quickly is it growing? Like I said, when we first detected it at six this morning, it was just pretty much in the center of town. Um, and I mean, it's what ten now, and it's covering all of Kingston. Oh, that, that is, is an issue. Yeah, but he's growing exponentially. It's growing pretty fast. If we get stuck in the loop. Will you send other agents to get us out? The Bureau has put all of its resources to this that it can. I, the probability of that doesn't seem very high, then. Figure it out. Okay. Oh. Let's get going, then. Nail just starts walking out with Clarissa. Uh, now that someone is physically close to Clarissa, it's important to note that she smells a lot like hairspray. That's all. And she walks out. <laughs> she smells incredibly flammable. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Wow, yeah. she smells like my grandma. <laughs> In the somewhat dim lighting of the comic book store, it was probably hard to tell. I mean, it probably seemed like he was wearing a trench coat. Kyle is actually just wearing a like a just a very large lab coat, like just too big for him. <laughs> um, and that's it. <laughs> just and he's Wonderful. walking upstairs. Is that all <laughs> Big Mom is wearing just a lab coat. Oh, Nothing there's else? he's wearing he's wearing like it's big enough that like it's hard to see what he's wearing underneath. Uh, but he it's just like sweatpants and like okay. a a print tee, uh, just an anime shirt. Just <laughs> somewhere about like halfway through the briefing, uh, Drake had pulled out some papers and was like scribbling notes, but there was clearly things written. He's like obviously working on something else. And as you all leave, he's still just sitting there, like writing these notes feverishly. <laughs> uh, your team has left, Mr. Yeah, I'll catch up. They're, they're not gonna be able to go anywhere without me. I have all the forms. Okay. This the two of you are just like awkwardly sitting. Yeah, she's just awkwardly. <laughs> some some time into it, Kyle comes down like, "Oh, we forgot all the four. Oh, oh, he's he's still here. Do you want to take him? I when yeah, I'm I'm coming. Um, here is form uh 47J for the reimbursement. Just make sure we okay. get that. Um, oh. 
kind of walk back in. Did you get the other requisition form 75G3 to make sure we're getting recompensated for the ammunition? That is a Uh-oh. good point. Uh, hang on, let me go through. Uh, do we have form 87G, which I do believe is about uh, printing reimbursement for the forms? Look, oh, uh, I can I don't... stay here all day and name <laughs> forms that need to be handed in to me. I don't know. Um, just, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I, I've not worked with any of the three of you before, just in case I also have the dick joke requisition form here. Um, just wanted to make sure. That is the most, yes. I Let me take that, please. Thank you. Yes. Actually, that is hold on. the important I need to, one. Yeah, no, I, you're right. Let's all fill that out before we leave. Yeah. Because going all day without that uh, would be really hard. No, I completely yeah. understand. You need to have that when you go on a mission, for sure. For sure. Um, I just want everyone to know I have a lig- religious exemption from those forms because I'm <laughs> Christian. Um, oh, so I understand. Okay, I understand. Did you fill out the form that declares your religious exemption from? Oh yes, and I declared the declaration of the form. Okay, so I'm exempt from the form that is the form. It's it was a whole big thing, but don't worry, I got a third eye somewhere in here. I knew what I, I was doing. All right, I understand. Uh, well, uh, it's now noon, so if you guys could take the ferry <laughs> and get to Kingston, I think that might be pertinent. Yeah, I was better off ripping off credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Big Mama, don't sound so sad. You could steal a credit card while we're there. I'm sure we have a form. How do you it? think I paid for the? Equipment. I think just walks. Just walks up saying, <laughs> "Has not filled out a single form." It just keeps <laughs> moving. Just walking behind him, like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna have to fill out so much paperwork for them." And if you uh, if you steal a credit card in a time loop, does that become infinite money? I think we should test that. I walk backwards <laughs> down the stairs and I'm like, <laughs> lock on to what he just said. <laughs> Uh, that sounds interesting. Um, how large has the the time loop gotten? Well, we put on paperwork just to be consistent here. It's covering most of the Upper Peninsula now, so oh, oh. that's pretty bad. We should okay, probably we get, should going. get going. <laughs> yes, yes, you should. And it is at this point that I will introduce what is called the mission clock. It is an eight segment clock. Once that is filled, bad things are going to happen. Now, you get on the ferry, and about halfway to Kingston, you don't see anything, but your boat continues, and you feel like something is off now. You know, normally I'd make a joke about the Holy Ghost entered me, but this feels like an inappropriate time to do that. So I'm going to keep it to myself. I feel, I mean, we filled out the waiver. I feel like you could legally make that joke without any repercussion. No, we might still have to fill out paperwork, and I'm trying to save us all a headache later. That's fair. But I'm Thank glad you. we all feel weird. Did we all feel it? I felt something. I always feel weird. I don't think I've noticed any difference. <laughs> <laughs> Here's how this should game we works. Oh, sorry. Tell e- oh, should we tell each other no, no, no. Our, our code names? Yeah, why don't we do a little introduction? You guys can get to know each other a little bit. Oh. Um, oh. Oh. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. You can go first. Uh oh. Um, <clears throat> they, he pushes off his glasses. Uh, I'm Big Mama. I did not choose the name. You are um, a I'm fan. Clarissa. <laughs> I did it again. You go first, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Normally, I don't speak up very much, but I'm very curious. Are you a big Martin Lawrence fan, Big Mama? Who is Martin Lawrence? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Oh, is that like an actor? He's a movie, Big Mama's House. About a, about a cop who dresses up like his mom. That sounds really weird. No. Never. 
No. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's it's fine. one of the All great right, early fine. 2000 films of a black man dressing up in drag. Is that like a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's well, unfortunately a trope. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll 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 unpack that later. Oh. Um, I'm Nail. Uh, I do insurance. I'm an HR. That's, that's right. So you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, then, huh? What's that? Okay, we're just gonna we're just keep doing that, huh? Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm Blake Goldfoot, uh, Records. I'm Clarissa. I work in administration. Sometimes I work the front desk at the New York office, but they don't let me do that anymore. So now I just sort paperwork in the back. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. Um, I work in R and D. What's that stand for? Uh, research and development. Oh, I like that. Wait, none of us are are technically field operatives. I've done field operations before. This is like my third, fourth time in the field. I lost track. My problem is I, I can see the past, so everything just kind of works out for me one way or the other. That's useful. I used to have a TV show where I did field work, but I wasn't part of the bureau, so it wasn't called that just yet. Cool. Look of recognition, like comes over <laughs> Drake's face. It's like, <laughs> so... he doesn't say anything, but he's just like. <laughs> Do you think we're already in the time loop then, or are we just? Well, we haven't you know, said I anything. Guess we'd see. Yeah, we haven't repeated ourselves yet. Hi, I'm Clarissa. Just kidding. <laughs> Town of Kingston is now in front of you and uh, here's how this game works uh, it's very similar to Brindlewood Bay where you can kind of just explore the town of Kingston uh, gather clues and when it comes to uh, once you've gathered enough clues you can use those clues to Use the do the theorize role. And that theorize role is going to you as players and characters are going to determine what the phenomenon is, how to contain the phenomenon, and then how to obfuscate it or hide it from people who are not a part of uh, the um, the bureau. So you've got a, a couple leads. Um, one is that Agent Wise and her partner Shale were sent in ahead of you. Uh, and the other place that you might want to check out is uh, there is uh, like the town hall uh, where they would keep uh, like records. Uh, it's a small enough town. I actually Googled it. I was just like random towns in Washington. Kingston, Kingston came up. There's about a thousand people there, which seems like it's small enough that they would just have like you know, uh, a male place. Uh, that male person or wherever that is, that might be another place to check out as well, too, is that probably is where a lot of the information comes and goes through in a small town like Kingston. So, where do you guys want to go first? Well, they said it started in the town square, right? Maybe there was some sort of fair happening caused all this would be a good place to start works i feel like maybe if we looked for the other two agents that got sent in they might be able to tell us something as well mm -hmm. let's, let's try you know city city hall city square then we can ask around for other can't really ask around for other agents who do we ask for i mean if it's a time loop, then we could no, ask, and they'll just forget in like a few hours. Well, that's one of the questions that we need to ask. We need to find out if anyone is aware that they're in a temporal anomaly. Question. 
hit. Do we think that we are now included in the time loops we came so our actions will repeat, or we are going to be repeating the actions of the original time loop? Well, we weren't in the original time loop, so I don't know that our actions would repeat with the original time loop. We might be on some sort of a delay, so when the loop circles back around, maybe we're exempt until the time within the relative to the loop that we arrived, and then our actions repeat. Oh, that's scary. Just see Nail like, oh my god, this is just like that movie. We're stuck. The one with that guy. Do any of you know what I'm talking about? Oh, and he that thing. The golf? No, I was thinking about the one with the, the alarm clock. Hmm. You thinking of Groundhog Day? Yeah. Wait. What? It's a time loop movie. It's a classic. There's a movie about a groundhog? Um, <laughs> yes. Well, so, we should find some citizens who've been here for a while. I think that we should make our way to the town center and start asking questions. That works Do for we have a map? Yeah. Great. Let's start going. <laughs> uh... As you get there, um, you can see uh, a number of people walking around. Uh, and at this moment, they do not look concerned with what is happening. There is one person, though, that does look maybe a little concerned. Uh, they're an older person. They're, they have like a mail bag on. And uh, they're slowly hobbling down the sidewalk, uh, putting mail in mailboxes, and then they'll continue hobbling down. Uh, and as you pass this person, they're muttering to themselves. They're like, wasn't, wasn't, this, wasn't this old when I woke up? I don't what this is what is that? What is happening? Continue to hobble down. That seems bad. Uh, I go over to him. Hey, hey, um, uh -huh. old timer. Uh, what did you what? say? I'm not an old timer. I just I don't look like this. How old are you? Twenty-eight. Mm hmm. Are you aware that you are in a uh, temporal anomaly? He's a civilian. Sorry. What? Uh, you're in a time loop, you know? Restart the day. It's kind of like when Subaru dies in ReZero and time resets to his last save point. What? I'm what are you not talking familiar. about? Not Have you ever seen the that. movie Edge of Tomorrow when they die and they reset to the last place they were where the loop started? <laughs> or like that Mario video game? Now that I'm familiar with. So it's like that, right? You lose the life and you start at the beginning of the level again. All right. Okay. That's making sense now. Uh, second question. What? 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 what are you That's talking fair. about? What do you, what do you mean? What I'm talking? You were 28 this morning. Well, but. <sighs> what? No. What? He's still 28. Oh, you're right. You are still 28 years old, but I'm assuming your body was a bit more in the shape of a 28-year-old's this morning. Yeah, well, whatever this stop it. Fix me. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So but, I'll get visually, right on how, it, sir. How old does he appear to be? Uh, they appear to be about oh, sorry. 62. 62? Okay. Yeah. We're still um, young. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Were you 28 this morning, too? You know, that's yes. what I used to tell people. <laughs> well, I was 24 this morning. I'm pretty sure I still am 24. That's nice. One day you yeah. won't be. Have you been yeah. delivering mail all, all day? Mm. 
Yeah. yeah that's yeah, like that you mention it. Yeah. Approximately how One. many letters and packages would you say you've delivered today? Well, I guess about a couple hundred, which now that I'm thinking about it, is far too many packages for this tiny town. I'm glad we're on the same page on that one. Yeah. Do you mind if I take oh. a look in your bag? I know it might be a felony, but it's it's for a good cause. Sure. That's okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely. Um, you know what we're going to do? This feels like a good time for an action movie. Because it sounds like y'all trying to get a clue. Mm-hmm. Just what we're going to do. Just a clue. Um, now, it doesn't always have to be a, a clue that you're trying to get. Anytime you're trying to do something risky or, or uncertain, we can do an action roll. But in this case, it seems like there's some sort of clue you're looking for. So, uh, Clarissa, I want you to... Uh, roll. Here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to tell you what the position of this roll is. Uh, I I think it's risky. Um, pretty much everything that you do in this game is going to be risky unless you guys really set up an action that your position is safe. So your position is risky. Um, you are going to take up a die pool as follows you're going to take one die if you follow all of the relevant bureau directives there are three bureau directives they are to identify the phenomena they're to contain the phenomena and they are to obfuscate it i will say that you do not get a die because you are not obfuscating this phenomena from a non-bureau <laughs> member may i say um as an administrator, I can say anything's by the books and justify it. And I'm justifying this in the sense that because he's in a time loop, he has no ah. idea. We can treat him like he's in the bureau and he'll have no idea in roughly 12 hours. Ah, I like that a lot. I get to tell you how much resonance to mark, yes? I believe so. Let's oh, say. no, paperwork. I tell you how much paperwork that is going to cost you. Um, no. I I think that is going to cost you. Uh, I want you to mark two paperwork. And the reason being that you still don't really know if that's true. You still don't know if <laughs> this person loses their memory at the start of each time loop. So they might still remember, but I will okay. give it to you. I will I will let you take the die for following all the all the relevant bureau directives. Uh, take a die if your background applies to this this action. As a medium and small time celebrity who's of similar body age, this man would he trust me more in doing this? Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's make a fortune roll to see if this person recognizes Clarissa. <laughs> uh, I I'm getting you get a you get a die for sheer luck, and. Uh, I I will not give them another die. I was trying to decide if I want to take a die away from them being so young and, and probably not watching a whole lot of TLC, but I'll give you a die just, just for the heck of it. And let's see what happens. Wait, aren't you Clarissa Taputa? I, I grew up yeah. watching you. TLC yeah. was like the only channel that we had. A, my parents only ever watched TLC. They said PBS teaches you terrible things. TLC is where you learn things. It's true. It's like a modern day sideshow. It's necessary knowledge. It's in please. And they open their bag further for you to to look in there. I will let you take an extra die for having a background that applies. Yes. Uh, do you have any relevant gear or requisition? Um, let me check. I mean, I have yeah. uh, radio cover identity. I have deep pockets. I could take some of these. Do you <laughs> want to try and steal from this person? No, that Man, doesn't really front. seem very Man, nice. Front. Oh, okay. <laughs> like that's yeah, like sorry. a that's a whole felony. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I. We, mm, I think maybe not. I'm feeling maybe we don't have any gear or, or requisitions that would help you. Okay. Uh, and are you using a paranormal power? That seems like an early time to mark a resonance. So I'm going to say no. Okay. So you get two die. 
You're going to roll with the, the first die for following all the Bureau's directives and one for your background applying. Uh, and we are going to judge the result based on the highest number amongst the dice that you roll. And a one to three, that's a failure, and I get to introduce a consequence. Four to five is a mixed success. In other words, you're you're going to do what you s- seek out to do, which is convince them to let you search in their, their bag and get a clue. But there will be a consequence as well, too. And on a six, you just succeed. Okay. Uh, that is a six and a two. Whoa. All right. So uh, they open their bag for you. And you are rooting around in there a little bit. Uh, and th- it's mostly just packages and letters. And then there is like a rock that stands out. It's like someone took a, a chisel and broke off a piece of a much larger rock. And on this rock, there is a line that sort of goes along the outside that is faintly glowing blue. Okay. Um, writing that down. Oh, thank you. It. Do you mind if I, if I take this from you? There's not a stamp on it. I don't think that's regulation. What? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take this from you. I'm going to add it to my collection of supernatural things, and you can just rest assured knowing it's okay here. Uh, well, Big Mama puts his hand on this dude's shoulder. You should really just go home, bud. I, yeah, that makes sense. I'm kind of confused. Maybe it's account of me being about 40 years older than I was this morning. Yeah, that's probably a good bet. It's definitely a good reason to not work. You have retirement age now, right? No, he's not. Oh. And he won't be for a while. Uh, No. Um, This isn't bad. Yeah. We're retired. We're not. (laughs) We don't have that anymore. (laughs) I'm going to go go home. I'm going to go take a (laughs) nap. Yep. You like anything after 30 is that same thing. Yeah, you too. You too. Well, and he just, they just wander off, just sort of hobble off to their house. <laughs> so, this time loop is different from any time loop I've ever heard of if people are aging inside of it. Well, it could just be a really unstable temporal nominee, and he could have aged like <clears throat> absent of everyone else aging someone could have aged backwards if it's really messed up we should figure that's out if point. that's possible that's like a thing people are doing <laughs> not for any particular reason no definitely <laughs> um is there any way i can look at that whatever it is that you found in his bag Clarissa? oh please if it's making him age i don't want it take it <laughs> can i use my retrocognition on this to see if we can pull another oh, clue from it. I like that a lot. You absolutely can. Let's go through our dice. Uh, are you following all relevant beer directives? I want to say yes. It's yeah, more being yeah, clandestine. So. just between yeah, yeah. the four of us. Yeah, I think so. It's just a demon core. <laughs> 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 this big metal thing. I don't know what it I is. I don't know. What it, let me get um, the screwdriver real quick. Do you have a background that applies to this action? I feel like looking at objects is what I would do to try to figure yeah. everything out. Yeah. That's a claims adjuster, I'm sure. A claims yeah. adjuster, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Take another dive for that. Any relevant gear or requisitions? Mm, requisitions, I don't think so. Gear... I don't think I have any gear on me that would be okay. relevant. Uh, uh, maybe and like, then let's. Oh. I was gonna say I, I, we didn't establish that I maybe would have had my like a magnifying glass, but uh, it's too I, late to wreck on that. I'm again uh, the basic gear sort of thing. I'm fine with you saying like I have this thing. Um, magnifying. I, I I can't imagine a world in which a claims adjuster wouldn't have some tool to like let them 
look closer at an object. So please go ahead and take that. And then let's look at a uh, retrocognition here. Uh, when you search for clues, mark one resonance to see echo. So yeah, mark that resonance. And I say, yes, take that fourth die. Okay. And let's see where that gets you. Failure, failure, failure. Uh, so two sixes and All one right. and a two. So 12, 13, 15. Uh, so you're just going to look at the, the highest number the of, highest the, of the okay. dice pool you rolled. Now, here's the thing. You rolled two sixes. That is a critical success. So you're going to get an additional benefit. Now, this is fun. I like these games. You can suggest a bonus or an additional benefit mm -hmm. if you want. I get the final say. So you're going to get another clue out of this. Um, talk some things out. What do you think? What do you think should be a, 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 the additional benefit? being able to see the moment the time loop started for him. Oh, okay. If there was like a wave. I like that a lot. <laughs> Here is what you see. You see earlier this morning, it's about 6 a.m. That's when people that uh, deliver mail often wake up because they got to get the mail sorted and deliver it to the houses. And uh, you didn't even ask this person's name. Rari is their name. Rari is, is at the uh, United States Postal Service headquarters here in uh, Kingston, Washington. And they wake up and they, they go to the headquarters and they're sorting through the mail and they pick up this chunk of rock that you see. Uh, it's much bigger, though. It's it, this that you're holding probably just fits in your palm. But when you are looking in the past, it's probably about five feet long. It's smooth on all sides, all four of its sides, and there are these crisscrossing blue lines that go all the way up it. And you see another figure walk up behind Rory. And this figure is wearing a oversized lab coat. They reach out their hand that is vibrating and they touch Rari and this long stone object and the stone object shatters. And then you come back. Just staring at Big Mama. Just kind of blankly. This is going to sound really weird. I've been wearing the lab coat this whole time. That's the one I'm wearing? Yeah. Yeah? Can you, can you vibrate your hand? Starts like doing like jazz hands. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, like, like the reverse flash. Can you, can you do, can you do a thing like that? Um, you want me to pull your heart out? Ah, you know that one. Yeah, no, I mean, oh, <clears throat> but you want me to? Okay. I tr try, try to do it. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> it's gonna sound strange. This rock is a piece of a bigger stone but somebody wearing your exact lab coat was the person that broke it and put it in the bag of that male person which by the way their name's rari that's a good name that's a weird name rari 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 like, rari. like a myspace screen name rari. Rari. x's on either side no, I mean, there might be an X in a single large case D, X, Rari XD. <laughs> anyway, 
you, so, it looked like you put your hands on the the larger part of the rock and on him and then the loop started huh so that's pretty weird um i mean these just to be clear if you only saw the lab coat these these are standard issue it's why it's so big on me it only stuck out because it was so oversized to me there are other small guys in R and D. I mean, you know. and the other possibility is that, like, in resolving <clears throat> whatever happened here, I become a part of what happened here, and thus am a part of whatever started it, but also what probably what's going to end it. Did you see nails start to hold their head like? I don't think my well, powers there's... are going to be a good idea for a time loop. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, realistically, you could have been seeing the future. Oh, God, the paperwork I'm going to have to fill out if we get this wrong. But hey, we can come back here and you'll have a lot of time to do it. You can't mess it up. <laughs> Seems like if we get this wrong, paperwork is irrelevant. Oh. I'm going to get the paperwork wrong. I think we're going to get this one right. Where should we go Big, next? What? Big Mama, as hmm. you are hearing all these things, something in your brain switches, and you start to hear a ringing in the back of your head. And it's getting harder and harder to pay attention to what Nail and Clarissa and, and Blake are saying. And the ringing gets louder and louder and louder until all of a sudden you double over, fall down on your knees. As you are just overcome with this sense of deja vu that you've been here before. And then all of you see Big Mama's head explode. Oh my god. Um, how messy is this explosion? Like, does it go places? Yeah. Neil just doubles over and throws up. Just starts puking. Uh, Clarissa takes out a small napkin, begins wiping her face. I... Just no emotional reaction to that. I think I have the right forms for this. Um, hang on. <laughs> Neil just looks up. I have a thing about blood. I'm so sorry. I I just can't. Oh, baby, you want a little baggie for that? And uh, yeah. she produces like a dog poopy bag and hands it to Nail. <laughs> yeah, take your time. It's okay. This is nothing, really, if you think about it. Um, I kneel we... down and take out my pen. I guess it's kind of always in my hand, but I, I pick up my pen and I start like kind of like sifting through whatever is left at the top of Big Mama's neck. Uh, what are, are you searching for something, like a clue or something? Yeah, I'm looking to see if there's anything that would explain, like, is there is there evidence of, like, an implanted explosive? Does this seem yeah. supernatural? Like, I love that. I love that. Let's, uh, let's get an action roll. Okay. Uh, are you following all relevant Bira directives? Um, someone's head did just explode in the middle of a very public place. So is that a yes or no? Uh, well, you... <laughs> what directives apply? Well, I'm, I I'm examining because I, I is, I'm assuming this is related to the mission. We are I'm in, in the middle of the town square, to... right? So there, yeah. So there are always three directives: identify the phenomenon, contain the phenomenon obfuscated from the public mm. well I, I think i'm working to identify and contain right now you do need to follow all relevant bureau directives in order to get that die i am putting my body between his <laughs> next stump in the public. nobody look over here nothing to see <laughs> we circle around the body oh no, here here you know what I'll, I'll obfuscate this way are there any uh buildings that are higher than the average here for sure, yeah, yeah. There's like a couple. Then like I lift two, up his body and I teleport to the top of one. <laughs> Love it. Uh, marker. Uh, you have marker resonance to do that. I think you have to mark mm -hmm. two actually yeah. to teleport. Two no, people. just just one. Well, it it just says one to teleport. Anything I can carry comfortably, and he said he's small, so I think I could carry him. 
and he's not a person anymore. Mark one resonance S- to teleport yourself to a place you can see. Mark, uh, make an action roll and mark one resonance to teleport someone or something else um, as well mm-hmm. with you. But it also says, "Where? Hang on, let me pull this up." Again. It yeah. does say anything so like, you can comfortably this carry. This power out. allows you to instantly yeah. transport yourself to, uh, like, you get to cu- anything you can comfortably mm. carry comes with you. I gotcha. So if it's like something big or something. All right. All right. Mark the resonance. Cool. Uh, you all see Blake pick up uh, Big Mama's body. Nick has just left. He's just gone. He went um, to grab food. <laughs> Nick is dead. <laughs> Big mama. Uh, he'll come back. He'll come back. Uh, and you see uh, Blake disappear. Uh, Blake, you are now at the top of a building. Um, you can see that, like, while you have left, there are a few people that are starting to, like, come around where this happened, but they don't see anything, so they walk away. So go ahead and take a die for following all the relevant bureau directives. Uh, do you have a background that you think applies to this action? I would argue yes. Because of being a librarian, I've spent a, I spend a lot of time reading books, and I've read uh, anatomy books and books on sure. all, all kinds of relevant data here. Um, all right, I will let you have that. Uh, any relevant gear? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, um, and I. How do you well, feel actually, about? Sorry, one piece of gear I have is I. I don't know what this means it's just in the gear that is listed in the book but there's no explanation of what it is is i have a containment checklist and i don't know if that Um, would give me a sense of like how to go about this examination yeah i read that as uh ways to help contain the paranormal phenomenon um but i'm i'm happy what do you think that means how do you think that would help you um, I mean, it depends on how we're defining checklist, because <laughs> if it's like a, a single page, like, just make sure you do these things, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably doesn't have anything particularly relevant. But if it's a checklist, but like, it's actually sort of like the, uh, like the army field survival guide sort of a thing, where I can like flip to a specific set of pages that talk about doing a quick field medical examination. Hmm. I, Which, if a department would have something like that, it would be records, most likely. It would maybe be records. It would be records. Uh, are there any departments that have, like, field manual in their gear? Translation protocol? Whatever that means. Because I... Like- I would, if you're describing it as like the field army manual, I feel like field operations would have something like that. I don't know if records would have something like that. Field operations uh, does not have anything that resembles that. All right. How about this? I will let you swap that out. So instead of a containment records, what is it? Containment checklist. And you can change it to a field manual. But that means you lose okay. the sort of containment specific help it will sure. provide in the future. Sure, sure. I'll I'll be able to successfully argue against that later, but You will not. I will be holding my own. <laughs> I have I have it's made like you the deal. <laughs> I've made you the deal. It is now a field manual. It is not helpful in helping to contain something. I mean that's what the bureau does. The field manual have to have helpful things about containment in it. It might have some loose general things, but nothing that is going to be specific in helping you. You may take a die for this role if you want it, or you may keep the containment checklist and have it come up in the future. No, I'll, I'll skip the die this time and I'll keep the checklist. Okay. Have the containment checklist. Uh, I'm also going to say to, I don't know how you feel about this, I don't know if you're using a a paranormal ability that specifically helps you investigate. You use that ability to get you out, and that's Mm. what got you the following relevant bureau directives. Yeah, there's no way that would help me investigate this. Yeah, so I think two die, and we'll see what happens. Cool. Six and a four. 
man, y'all. Um, <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> uh, out of uh, Big Mama's neck, you're like poking around and you see uh, a light. There's just a bright light. And as you look, it gets like bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, does it have a specific source? It seems to be emanating from inside of Big Mama's body. I'll pull out a pocket knife that I carry. And I think the most important thing right now is figuring out what this is. So I'm going to yeah. cut deeper and open yeah. Big Mama. I have not been doing this, but I should. I think that's another action roll. I think uh, okay. this is risky as well, too. Uh, I think that last one would have been playing it safe because you had, had disappeared and had the time to do it. But I think this one's risky. Uh, I think you're, again, following uh, relevant bureau directives, and you said you have a pocket knife. Go ahead and take a dive for the gear. Uh, do you think your background applies? Uh, I would say it applies as much as it did the first time. I don't know. It, okay. Like... I I mean, I, I don't know if as a librarian you'd be, like, cutting into people a lot. You may have, like, the, the theory for it and have had right, books, right. but the, the doing of it um, may be a little bit harder. So, yeah. to, to die again? Sure. I think, by my count? Yeah, so uh, my high die is a four. Okay. Um, you take this thing out. It is... a glass ball and inside of this glass ball is this swirling white and blue energy and then you drop it and it shatters and from down below you knew that Drake was exploring this thing, and then all of a sudden, there is a Tyrannosaurus Rex on top of that building that crushes and kills Blake Goldfoot. So that was a success. Mm -hmm. And I gave you the clue. <laughs> oh, no. I know. Great. But they don't have the clue, so I would call that a failure. Because nobody sure. has the clue now. Sure. Again, this is all going to make sense in a little bit. Mixed, okay. Mixed success. Mixed success. Nail just um, starts hitting Clarissa's arm. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Oh, now I, we should probably run. <laughs> start. Oh, <my> bad. <laughs> the T Rex starts chasing and chomping on people. What do the two of you do to try and escape? We should head into a building. Is my like if we run into City Hall, it probably can't chop through brick. That's what I'm hoping. Um, so Clarissa can start booking it towards City Hall, towards the nearest Let, door. Let's do this. Uh, we're gonna. There aren't isn't a specific help action in this. Um, uh, but mm -hmm. in most blades in the dark, there's like a somebody leading an action roll. Um, so Clarissa, you're leading you and nail to the city hall so let's have you do an action roll for this uh i don't think you're following all the relevant bureau directives because you're running away from something no. that you definitely need to be obfuscating yep. uh any backgrounds you think would apply for either of you two um, i think as administrator i'd probably be in charge of the fire drills right and making sure people can safely exit buildings so i think safely entering one is one that i am here so this is this is your background. This is not the uh, the department that you are a part of. Does your medium background help you run? I think it helps me mediumly. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, explain that beyond a pun? No, but is it funny okay. enough where you should give me the die? Yeah. I... Yes. Will not. I think it sets a dangerous precedent <laughs> that, that puns get you dice. Okay. 
That's fair. And I see, fair. I see through you, Will. It was a good try. Listen, I appreciate the I'm effort. Just, I'm a logic person, you know. <laughs> I have a philosophy background. You're not going to out logic me. Uh, do you have any gear that either either of you? Do you have any gear that you think would help? <sighs> Um, I have a bottle of hairspray <laughs> and a Please. lighter. Okay. All right. Okay. Tell me, so what do you do? Hear me out, right? Yeah. 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 Clarissa is going to, uh, make the, uh, hairspray permanently blasting, like break the, the top of it, mm -hmm. tape a lighter to the front of it, and then toss it to create a very large distraction for this T-Rex. Yes. So there's just like this dangerous explosive in the middle of a street. But uh -huh. hey, that's probably more enticing to a, a being that only senses movement. Yes, I absolutely love it. Please, I think, take a die for that that relevant gear. But you will be, be getting rid of the hairspray and the lighter. You will no longer that's have okay. that. You have but to you take the die. from a bunch of people. Clips has um, got emergency hairspray. Uh, either of you yeah, choose want to to their ankles. <laughs> <laughs> two hairspray cans. Of course she does. Uh, either of you two want to use a paranormal ability? Um, I can use, uh, doop doop telekinesis to fling the doors open so that oh, we can get okay. in easier without struggling with that. Okay. Uh, I like that. I think it's just, uh, mark resonance. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I think what do, I think, let's see, mark one resonance, to move something small using your mind to make an action roll and mark one resonance when moving something large and cumbersome. I might. What do we, I, I think opening a door might be large and cumbersome and not small. I feel like a door is small because there's not resistance built in. If it was a locked door, I might agree with you that it's a large thing to move. All right. Because You're right. It's, it's probably unlocked. business hours. They're just turning the handle. It's All also right. a okay. city yeah. hall door, which means it must be mm -hmm. ADA compliant. So it has to push mm -hmm. in. It's true. You're right. Out. It's true. So this and, is... Uh... <laughs> This is so my even... Gus's background in BS, um, <laughs> which I think gives us another die, if you really think about it. it. <laughs> Look, as the insurance Stop claims it. adjuster, Stop it. it has to be easily pushable. Take take the die. Take the die for the gear. I love that. Take the die for the, the uh, paranormal ability, as long as you mark that resonance. Go ahead and roll those mm -hmm. two dice. Okay. Also, a quick disclaimer for our listeners. Uh, don't do any of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's very dangerous. Please do not do that. <laughs> so I rolled two twos. Yeah. Hair flip, hair flip. Here oh, we no. go. Here's where we get into the fun stuff, people. All right. You start to run and you toss this flaming hairspray can at this T-Rex. The T-Rex turns unfazed looks at you and nail and just chomps on the both of you oh. cutting you in half and you know, then my the four of you lose some weight <laughs> and then the four of you wake up on the boat kingston is right in front of you do we feel you are now at this you remember everything you are now at the start of a second loop. I will be changing the mission clock from an eight segment clock to a six segment clock. Oh. Friends. Y'all can start again. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. There's a T Rex in my. Way. Man, I died again. <laughs> again? Wait, what like, do you mean again? again? Well, that's. that's... Redacted. I can't talk about that one. That's that's okay. Okay, I'm going through the paperwork and I'm not going to do it. We got eaten oh. by a T Rex. I don't. I think both oh, of that's you were crazy. dead before that happened. Where did the T Rex come from? You. I don't. I don't know. Blake disappeared and then a T Rex came in. Blake, what do you remember? Blake, did Blake, you summon? Were the you the T Rex? No, I got turned into a T Rex. Uh, yeah, square Wait, Blake, that's really useful. Wait, I, there was a weird glass bead thing inside Big Mama, and huh. I pulled it out, and uh, because my fingers were all 
slick. Uh, you were reaching into me? Well, I had to cut into you to figure out where the light was coming from. And then uh, I found this glass bead and my fingers were slick and it, it fell and it shattered and a T-Rex appeared and it squished me. Here, wait, I have some experience with this. Let me try. And I, I try to take it. Like, uh, he's doing he many wants... a time with many a flash drive. <laughs> this, this, he tries to get out the, the beat. Do you want some laxatives? I always keep a few on me. No, Do no, you that's wanna... last resort. That's last resort. Okay. <laughs> Friends, uh -huh. I think I have a hypothesis. So, hear me out. If this male person is the person who had this little rock, and we can assume that the little rock, which was glowing blue, was tied to the bl glowing blue thing in Big Mama, then maybe these glowing blue things are being distributed via mail system after it all shattered. And that's uh, who we got to stop, which is why it's expanding, because the mail system is so good in this here United States. <laughs> well, it, I'm I gonna, mean, it was. I'm going to pause just one second. Is this your theory role? doesn't have to be like, you can come up with multiple theories, that's fine. But is this the one that you as a group are saying, that's it? That is what it is and how we're going to stop it. I'm still trying now, to get that beat out. <laughs> just dry yeah. heaving. Just, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I really don't think there's anything in there. Are you guys sure? <laughs> oh, it wasn't in that part of you. Oh. Was it? No, I mean, it was it was up there. It just wasn't in his digestive Software? tract. Oh. Like, you're not going to be able to, to vomit it out. We'd have to... I guess I have my knife again. No. No. I don't need to die again today. But you're going to come back. So if we could get that sooner, and maybe if we mess it up, we'll get a T-Rex again, and then it'll happen all again, and we'll start here again. It'll be like nothing. I'd rather not, like, sure, like a gift a horse in the that? mouth. You know? Like, let's okay. not just assume we're going to live second. again. The risk is Do any of us look older? I look at everybody's faces. Um, let's roll a or die. Younger for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Let's roll a die. Uh, I'm gonna roll one die, and I'm just gonna roll one die. One die. Okay. Um, one. let's okay. look at my fortune roll cheat sheet here. Um. Uh, nail is uh about fifteen now, and uh Clarissa is pushing like seventy two. Do we feel different, or is it we visually just look? Yeah, I mean, you yeah, you do feel a little different. Yeah. Okay. No, you feel better. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't say, I didn't comment on how good they felt. They just feel different. Just yeah. had a lot of... Nails anything like I was when I was 15. Just unspeakably horny. <laughs> Whoa, where'd that come from? Whoa, do we have the horny jokes paperwork? Hold on, I only filled out the dick one. Yeah, you didn't, yeah, you didn't fill that one Oof. out. We're going to need to meet with HR in a little bit. 69J? I, I filled that out. <laughs> And that, that was just Will asking if we filled the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, no, he did all that. That was the, the pre-session. Oh, okay, just making sure. Here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, you, you both look terrible. Hey, yeah, I did my hair real good today. You better shut up. I, no, I, I pull out my phone and put on, like, the FaceTime camera and just look. Uh, Clarissa begins using it as a mirror <laughs> to fix her hair with her same bottle of hairspray that's now intact again, I hope. Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> Is this Nail one just... of those filters? This TikTok? No, no filters. That's how you look. 
Nail just starts feeling his face. Just, oh my Are god! They... I yeah. rebuke that in the name of the Lord, and she starts trying <laughs> to cross in herself, crying. <laughs> um, and it's just like, okay, this has to be a prank, right? I can't be fifteen again. That's not so bad. No, you're just probably gonna need to go on Accutane again, but it's, you know, you feel better, right? Like looser, spry. What? Yeah, Good. I've got the energy now, but now my voice is gonna be doing this. Drake is just yeah, looking yeah. at Clarissa. It says, "Yeah, it can always be worse." <laughs> What do you, what do you mean worse? I still look great. My my skin still got a, a vape glow to it. Like this is delicious. Oh. Wait, I think I have a vape in my pocket. <laughs> just just in, <laughs> appeared automatically. <laughs> the fifteen of a vape appeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, that's the new 15. thing from Jewel. Yeah, they invented teleportation just to instantly deliver. <laughs> Temporal yeah, it's teleport. actually Department of External Containment Bureau's jewel. <laughs> jewel. That's what, we got to get our funding from somewhere. <laughs> that's how they discover these temporal anomalies. When the jewels start disappearing from the <laughs> inventory. Ah, we got another one. Uh, last time we lost it, I thought Lala Del Rey just had it for a minute. I, I, I'm just happy it's here. <laughs> cool, just hits the vape. Tangerine dream? No. Oh, I just be... <laughs> <laughs> uh, also hits the vape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at this point, oh. you've touched down uh, at the dock of Kingston. What do you want to do? So, town hall was a bust. Literally, my head busted open. Um, yeah, I didn't really talk about yeah. that. So, I heard a sound, right? And it's kind of similar to like when I hear people's thoughts. And. But it was just a like a noise, and it Nails got really loud. Makes a noise. You can hear our thoughts. What am I thinking right now? Uh, I, I can I can choose to hear your thoughts. I don't particularly want to hear your thoughts right now. Just, okay. I was thinking about whether or not my palms would get hairy. That's there it. you go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the... <laughs> you remember what it was like when you were an adult, though, right? You don't have like you, you have, so you know that your palms won't. No, no, we're just gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. So, wait, uh, yes, are you saying that my head Harry, Don't worry about it. <laughs> are you saying that you think that whatever's doing this is conscious of it? I wasn't saying that. It, well, maybe. I don't really know what it's a sign of. It just, uh, I got really loud and my head exploded. Hmm. I Please have a, a game question. Mm -hmm. Since the day is reset, does our resonance and our paperwork also reset? So we technically have not taken those actions yet. Um. <laughs> um. I would argue that resonance is like, already like outside of the known yeah yeah okay. i'm i how about you reset your paperwork i'm all right with that okay uh and then we'll say that resonance due to its paranormal nature already uh remains okay what were the names of um the agents that were already here was it shale and wise and shale uh, agent wise, wise and, and shale. agent shale Um, well, I probably could have done this the first time. And so, uh, yeah, very, uh, to be expected, I suppose, uh, big mom pulls out like, um, uh, from under the lab coat, there is like a whole satchel pulls out. It's like a computer bag, um, pulls out a computer quick, like type some stuff out, hit center, type something else out, hit center. Type something else out, hit enter. <laughs> okay. One second. Take your time. I'm going to just stand here. I'm going to consult the spirits real quick. Nail is and just standing next to deck. Big Mama. <laughs> <laughs> standing next to uh, Big Mama, just like, 
trying to do the Aquaman. Boop, 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 just thinking. Boop, 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 trying to get it into na- Big Mama's head. Um. Okay, wait. This isn't. They have. Okay. Type something out. I. I want to do an experiment while you're typing. I'm unless, not just you're tidy. Ready. Oh, okay, it worked. The so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Big Mama hacks into the Wi-Fi throughout the city, runs a quick mm-hmm. program that just gives him access to every um, uh, ring, like doorbell, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like simple uh, surveillance system yeah. in the city, in the town. Love it. I I'm assuming you're using your uh, your department. Is that your department uh, tool or it's, device? Are you just I wasn't saying... going to make it? Okay. I'm just kind of like using my hacker skills. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's um, let's make it a roll then. Um, I think it's. Um, I think you're playing it safe. I don't know if it's necessarily risky. It's not. Um, the Internet of yeah. Everything was a terrible idea. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's risky. Um, Your so refrigerator I think should not be connected to the internet. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think you're following all relevant bureau directives. Uh, I would definitely say that your background helps in that. Uh, do you have any gear that would help with this? My my laptop is kind of sure. what allows yep. it. I don't know if you want yeah, to argue yeah. that it helps. Or... I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Uh, so three dice. Uh, I don't think you're using any of your tele tele telepathy so go ahead and roll those those three dice there that was such a satisfying ping okay yeah hit a plate totally unintentional uh what what is your intention we should have established this i am looking for shaw and shale sorry and shale okay guys absolutely um you are looking shale yes worked with him before yeah, um, you are looking for Wise and Shale, and uh, there is a a ring doorbell that is looking like across a street, and you see that it is looking at the library, and it is the time on the the record says about seven a.m., and you see Agent Wise and Shale walk into the library. Um, now. What is the consequence? Oh, it doesn't explode again. Uh, n- <laughs> n- <laughs> no. Um, I I will. Here's what I'll say. I'll I'll mark one on the mission clock. Um, the the first time you were doing the mission clock, I kind of I I was kind of I said it was eight segments. I was kind of just playing around with it because I wanted to introduce the like time loop mechanic. Now I will be clear that I'm marking the mission clock, um, because uh, the the camera that you are viewing cuts in and out. There's like static. The time starts like zipping forward and spinning back and zipping forward, and you start seeing like everything the whole day like all at once in this quick flash and it is almost impossible for you to determine what's happening and at what time it's happening cool uh big mama kind of closes the closes the laptop summarily puts it away so do you think this proves the existence of like a soul because mm-hmm. we shouldn't be able to remember what happened in a previous time loop if everything is reset to its original physical state, which means consciousness needs to exist above physicality and physical reality, which kind of proves right. the existence of a soul. <laughs> to a degree, at, at least. Um, now, I'm, I'm interested in whether or not the temporal reset is isolated to organic material or if it extends to all inorganic material as well mm, energy yeah and so are you guys okay with me doing an, an experiment yeah um so i, I quickly like start scroll scrawling something down on multiple pieces of paper and i hand each of you a piece of paper 
when I put another one in my own pocket and one under a rock. They all say the same thing. They all say temporal anomaly loop test one, self iteration two, today's date, uh, and one twenty six p.m. And then uh, I kind of look at everybody, give a thumbs up, and then I look up and I teleport to the nearest cloud. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Alright. So I am assuming your intent is to die. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Um to be clear, uh I will not start you at the start of the time loop. We will wait until mm-hmm. the yeah, mission clock. I understand. Okay. Alright. Alright. <laughs> um go ahead and go ahead and mark a resonance. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, that's funny that is funny um you no. all see blake just uh leave like he did last time uh except uh this time you hear the sound of something falling very very fast and then right next to your boat <laughs> splat right into the water Oh my god, I didn't think the rapture was coming so quickly. Y'all start praying. This is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When she goes the other way, herself. it was the rapture. <laughs> I, I, it's just very scary. Neil I want to go push over that mailman and take that rock back. No, let's... Um, so, <laughs> regardless of what Goldfoot had going on, uh, Shaw and... Sh- Shale. I know Shale. I need to remember these things. Shale and Wise are in the library. We should go probably look for them Nails. to get some forward progress puking thumbs up at <clears throat> big mama to say yeah i'll follow you is the mailman uh, on the way do we know mm, sure because i want that rock we can make sure that he's on the way you know exactly Thank where he God. is right now so we walk to the library in a way that we could stop and bother the old man. Yeah, <laughs> I will. I will not make you roll uh, again. Uh, you you get the the fragment of the rock, uh, and uh, Rari continues on their way, uh, and then you get to the library, and uh, the uh, door is open, and you can see just one person inside. Uh, And Big Mama, you would know that this is Shale. Real quick, I know I'm not there, but did Rari remember them? Uh, Rari, uh, it's not that they remembered. It's that they had like a vague sense that they knew you all. If that makes sense. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Clarissa assumes because that's because she's famous and for no other reason. (laughs) <laughs> it is it is it is because you're famous yes Sh- shale hi uh, 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 oh 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 me did it work do you remember remember the last loop we were in yes when my head exploded uh, oh um i didn't want to have to remember dying again but you know Sorry. Well, obviously, I didn't know that that was going to happen. Uh, Check your pockets, and each of you check your pockets, and you pull out a device that you didn't know was in there. It's like a small, round metal disc. And Shale goes, I gave that to you about two loops ago because you needed to remember the loops that you've been through. That's You've been on a lot more. Oh, God, that boy didn't have to die. <laughs> yeah, so oh. Goldfoot really thought <laughs> he was on to something and decided to test the loop and um, may have teleported to a wow. scene height. And then just now he himself... gave us these papers and we're never going to see him again. <laughs> I mean, we will. We'll see him. Well, you'll, you'll see him when uh, you all die again. Uh, or the loop just resets. Sometimes it's death. Sometimes Wait a it's second. just the loop. You said we've been here for multiple loops? Mm-hmm. Yes, many loops. Man, I gotta add more deaths to the list. I don't... 
Wait, why do you um, remember all those? Yeah. I don't know. I... Wise and I have been here since... Uh, well, we were actually here investigating something else when we got caught up in it, and... I, I don't know. I... Wise doesn't remember when the loop resets, but for some reason, I do. Wise is in the room with us? Mm, this is... Uh, she did that, and then she jumped off a bridge. Wise is probably out in the forest, just on the edge of town. What were you guys investigating when you came here? Um, why don't we try and get a clue? How about that? Get a clue? Because I don't have one. Are you following all relevant beer directives? Yes, I think so. Do you have a background that applies? Don't really think so. Uh, Any gear? You think helps? Not that's particularly helpful at this. Yeah. Uh, any paranormal abilities you want to use? I think your telepathy might help. Yeah. Um, so, I like, having this telepathy, I've had it for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I asked a question, and I will very quietly... So, like, I will build a connection between our minds, which is something I have to choose to do. Mm-hmm. But... I've always done it like this, like after asking a question, I don't communicate anything when I build the connection and I just let mm-hmm. them, let their sort of mind speak, speak to me directly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will do that. I will mark one resonance. So I get two. Ah, uh, yes. Two dice. Four. Okay. You are hearing the words that Shale says out loud as well as seeing this moment in his mind. Um, And you you see and feel and hear and hear Shale say that, well, we were hearing rumors of um, extraterrestrial technology here and extra technology that, uh, extraterrestrial technology, I apologize, that has been here mm, as long as the Earth has been around, best we could tell. I thought I thought they declassified the aliens. They declassified what they wanted the public to know about the aliens. Uh, honestly, I was just hoping some other department would have to pick up the alien stuff. Uh, no. Um, yeah, alien technology. That seems pretty connected. Did you get to the ship? Or tech or whatever it's just outside of town uh it's probably where why is this studying right now did you touch something because uh, i, I remember mean, from the last mission we were on jail you are a field operative and that sounds like something r&d should be touching look i've told you before i am in records i'm terrible at field ops that's why I well, touch that makes sense. when I'm not supposed to. I've only been on a few field ops. Also, everyone died on that one. So, well, Everyone's died on this one a lot. It keeps no, happening. I've only died once. You've died a lot more than that. I refuse to believe that. You remember dying once. I have a question. <laughs> it makes you feel better. <laughs> Yes. I've, yes. I've also touched something that I probably wasn't supposed to. Krista produces the rock from her hair, which she had in the quaff. Um, holds it out. 
Yes, that looks like it was part of the larger piece, yes? Yeah. We think some of the citizens uh, somehow stumbled upon this UFO craft and took some things back. Interesting. Okay, good to know. She puts it back in her quaffed. Is that the best place for it, really? It's pretty safe. You you it's could knock on my hair right now. A lot of hairspray. Nothing's getting it around. No, oh, all right. Come yeah, that's a metallic tone to that. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, we're gonna go. So that's where we're wise. Why don't you give wise one of these? Uh, it's, I don't. Well, mostly because when we start the loop, because I don't. Again, I'm. I don't seem to be caught up in it. She starts where we were. I usually start exactly where I am. So sometimes it's hard to get to her. You know. I tried the first 10, 20 times to get to her and kept dying. And so eventually I just realized, well, I'd rather keep researching, see if I can find a way to stop it. And then when the lot of you came around, thought maybe at least give them to you. Uh, I can, here's an extra one. If you give it, if you somehow get there. That'd be great. All right. Well, I'll keep researching. What do you okay all right well i'll go check on the ship see if that's the cause i'm pretty sure it is I'm gonna just go out on a limb say that's the reason this is happening maybe but until you use the theorize role it's just a theory i know i'm aware okay but well a few more clues first jeez how <laughs> freaking it's in records. This guy doesn't even matter. <clears throat> hey, records is real important to people in records, and I think that's worth something. Thank you. <laughs> My ghost is extremely offended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you leave. Um, and uh, on your way, you get to the edge of town. The forest is about to start. Uh, there's somebody standing in your way. It is a small, scrawny, blonde-haired person wearing an oversized lab coat. And they look straight at you, Big Mama, and the rest of you, and go, So, you finally made it here. And we will see you next week. See, it looks nothing like me. I can't believe you thought that was me. You saw the lab coat. It's oversized. Look at you. <laughs> I know, I'm assuming you looks exact. I mean, it is a direct exactly. copy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly no, like it. Still, still so. Uh, they have. Exactly like <laughs> like R&D has lab coats in every doesn't. size. This is... And they give everyone too big lab coats. Everyone's lab coat. <laughs> Four sizes too big. Well... <laughs> I'm having fun. I can't wait to see what you all decide is is this paranormal phenomena. And um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See you.